Okay, so it's asking for decreasing. So according to the list that we made yesterday, decreasing is when the derivative is negative. When the first derivative is negative, that's when it's decreasing, right? Okay. So that means I need to find the derivative of f because f is what it's asking for. So the derivative of f is finding the derivative of the integral. Okay, so we can use the second fundamental theorem to just replace the x, to replace the t's with x's. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so let me fix that before I forget. That'll be, these two will switch spots. And three, okay. Okay, so I get f prime is equal to x cubed plus 15x squared minus 54x. Solve for x. It's got a GCF of x, so I factor out an x. I factor, it's a quadratic from here, so I factor out the quadratic. I got to figure out the two numbers that add up to be positive 15 and multiply to be negative 54. Positive 18, negative 3. Okay. Set them each equal to 0. I skipped that step. I didn't show that step, but I set that equal to 0. I set this equal to 0, and I set this equal to 0, so it gave me three answers. Okay. Now, to figure out de increasing, decreasing, you have to use the first derivative test, which the line is, right? So we have to figure out if the derivative is positive or negative in between each of these intervals. So the first one is negative 18 to negative 1. So I have to pick one value somewhere in between. Doesn't matter where. Pick the easiest one, negative 1, negative 2, negative 10, whatever one you want to pick. And I'm going to plug it into the first derivative, OK? So the first derivative is either here, here, here. They're all the same. They're just factored versions. This is a factored version of this guy here. So it doesn't really matter which one you plug them into. I would probably plug it into this guy here because it's easier, because it's just adding and subtracting and multiplying especially if this is a non-calculator question, because this guy here, you can plug in, but then you have to cube it, multiply it, square it, multiply it, multiply it again. And it's a, it's a non, these are non-calculator questions. So I think the easiest way is to plug it into that guy. Okay. So if I plug in like anything in between zero and negative 18, it doesn't matter anything in between zero, as long as it's in between zero and negative 18, it'll work because it'll give you the same answer for whatever value you choose between zero and negative 18. So if I choose like negative one, if I plug in negative one here, plug in negative one here, plug in negative one here. Again, I don't care what number I get. I just want to know if it's positive or negative. That's all I care about, okay? So this will give me a negative. This will give me a positive. This will give me a negative. So negative times a positive times a negative makes a positive. So plus, plus, so pluses all throughout here. Okay. Uh, zero to three. Okay. Zero to three. One again. You can pick one this time, positive one. So if I plug in one here, one here, one here, I'm going to get a positive one times a positive number, times a negative number. That's gonna be a negative solution there. Okay. Um, let me double check to make sure we don't. We only have to check in between the bounds. We don't have to check anything before negative 18 or after three. Okay, we just check inside the bounds. Okay, they just want, that's all they want us to check. Um, decreasing, where is the slope negative? Right there. Zero to three. So we put decreasing. Zero to three.
because f prime is negative. Or you can say f prime is less than zero. Either one was okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they don't want that. Yeah, I'm looking at the answers right now. They don't want that. I have no idea why they don't want, wait. Wait, give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, they do want it. It just didn't happen to be the answer. Okay, never mind. We do have to check. Sorry. Scratch that what I said. We do have to check, just like we did back in first semester. So we do have to check outside the bounds too. Okay. So when we do check, we're going to check a number bigger than three, less than negative, um, less than negative uh, um, 18. So whatever number you want to choose again. So nice round number. I mean, negative 19 is not really a nice round number, but you can try it. Negative 20 is a more of a round number, negative 30, negative 100, whatever you want, as long as it's less than negative 18. So it'll be a negative. That'll be a negative. That'll be a negative. Negative times a negative times a negative makes a negative here. Same thing, three, you could choose four or you can choose 10. I would, I like round numbers. So when I plug in things that are bigger or smaller, I usually choose like big, nice, big round numbers, like 10, 20, 100, but it's up to you. So that would be positive. That would be positive. That would be positive. So it's positive over here as well. Okay. So decreasing or negative infinity to negative 18. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. The last two problems, they're both very similar, similar to what we've been doing and similar to what we've, um, what we, similar to what we've been doing. They're just worded differently. Okay. So look at this problem. I want you to look at this problem and come up with a plan. I'm not going to tell you what the plan is because I'm not going to tell you what to do because I think you can solve this problem without me but I want you to take a look at it and read it and we'll talk about it in a few minutes, in about a minute, okay? So what do you think you're gonna do with this? You have a graph, you have a question, they give you some pieces of information, what do you think we're gonna do? That looks familiar, okay. That looks familiar there. G of X is the same thing as the integral and I've seen that before, okay? G of five, I know that I need to plug in five for X, right? That's what that means, plug in five for X. To which one? To G. What, didn't I just see G? Right there, right? So if nothing else, plug in five for G anywhere you see an X, I'm gonna plug in a G. If nothing else, do that. If nothing else, do that, because I guess what? The answer will come to you if you do that. Okay. Okay, so I plugged in five for G. Now, how do I solve this part here? How do I solve that part there? What does that mean to do? You've seen it before, many, many times. What is that part right there that I just underlined in, in red mean to do? Hmm? Yeah, it looks like it looks like something where we're finding the antiderivative, right? So if I knew what f of t was, 
I would find the antiderivative, right? Kind of like I did for the question before, right? They told me what it was right there. T, t cubed plus 15 T squared minus 54 T, right? But instead of f of t, what do they give me? What do they give me? Instead of f of t, what do they give me? What else is there besides that that I haven't that we haven't talked about? Critical thinking. Come on, come on, come on. You guys know it. What is what else is they what else? What else is on there that I have not talked about at all? Mm -hmm. The graph, yeah, the graph. So let's go look at the graph. Lo and behold, it's a graph of F. Lo and behold, okay, that must go with F of T. So instead of the equation, they gave us a graph, okay? Okay, so how am I gonna use the graph to solve that? What am I gonna do to solve that? How am I gonna use the graph to solve that guy right there that you're looking at. What does that mean? There you go. Well, actually, you're close. You're along the right lines. We're gonna look at the graph, but we're not looking at the Y values, we're looking at there you go. The area, it's saying, what is the area for F of T from three to five? That's what it's saying, okay? Again, just trying to pull information. If you're wrong, fine. It's better to be wrong on the notes than it is on a test, right? So now I want you to make your mistakes because that's how we learn. If you don't make mistakes, you already know it, right? Why are you here if you already know it, right? So that's the way we, some of you don't hate to make mistakes. Mistakes are how we learn, right? That's how we learn. Um, everybody makes tons of mistakes every day. It's just how you learn from them, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find area under the curve from three to five for F. That's F right there. So let me go three, let me go five. Let me close that bound. So it happens that it's just this triangle right here. Because five closes, five is an inter intercept, so it closes it off. So we just have to find area of that little triangle there. It's got a base of three. It's got a height of three, not three, sorry. It's got a base of two. Two times three is six. Half of that is three. G of five is three, okay? And it's because it's below the x-axis, good. We would put a negative, good. Absolutely, yep. Okay. All right, so now a 12 looks almost identical, but again, it's different. There's little pieces that are different. Now they're using F, they've switched up F and G. Big deal, that's just the name. Names are just, names are uh, irrelevant. F and G, H, whatever they wanna use, okay? So the graph is G. They want us to find F double prime of negative two. Okay. Well, F is the same thing as the integral. Okay. So we're looking for F double prime. So I'm looking for the second derivative of that guy. That sounds familiar. I think we've done that before. What's the first derivative gonna look like? 
the graph, yeah, g of x, the graph. The first derivative, f single prime, is g of x, which is the graph, the y values of the graph, right? Okay, let's go one step further. We want to find f double prime. f double prime is what? It's going to be g prime. And how do I use the graph to find g prime? Slopes. Slopes. Okay. One is the y values of the graph. One are the slopes of the graph. That's what they want. They want the slope of the graph at negative 2. When x is negative 2. So let's go over here. X is negative 2 right there. So it looks like everywhere from negative 6 to 0, it has the same slope. It's got a constant slope, the same slope, negative slope, right? So if I find the, the, the slope of this segment here, that's the same slope for everything in between negative 6 and 0. Okay, so negative one, or sorry, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So I go down six. And then I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, over six. Slope is rise over run. Negative 6 over positive 6 makes a negative 1. Yep. So even though it looked different, it was exactly the same as what you guys did. And there's, an, there's part of the assignment that's going to look even different that I did not show you. I did that on purpose because you have enough intel to be able to solve those problems. It deals with original... First derivative, second derivative, what are the signs? Positive, negative, that kind of thing. Okay, you guys can do it, but I wanted to give you something that you hadn't seen, like word for word, to see if you could use your critical thinking skills. Okay, all right, so the rest of the time, so we got about 25 minutes. I'm gonna give you time to use to start on the assignment. Okay, so if you need a Chromebook, go grab a Chromebook. If you could, it's also on your phone, it's already posted on um, Delta Math. 